I mean, I still remember the very first time I saw Fat Out of Hell, which was on the Opry Whistle Test television show, and I couldn't believe what I was seeing. He was this guy who was larger than life, both physically and in terms of his uh, stage presence. And, uh, you know, he, he, you know, he went on to make an entire career off that one album, which, by the way, the critics looked down their nose upon. They thought it was a pastiche of rock music, but the fans disagreed. They thought it was absolutely wonderful. And pr pretty much every household in, in Britain had a copy of that album at some point. Indeed. And just talk to us a little bit about like what he was like when you were interviewing him. Does he have an off switch? Was he always the kind of guy that, that you know, his persona was? I mean, he was prone to the odd meltdown, for example. The US Apprentice is, I mean, it was strong stuff. <laughs> yeah, he was a force of nature. And I think each time he would test you, he would really, um, you know, go, go full guns blazing into an interview. The moment the interview started, he was there. Um, you know, testing out, asking you, demanding to know why you'd ask certain questions. He didn't want to bring up his weight. I think colleagues of mine had been warned or had got into trouble if they brought that up. Um, and he also, you know, he he felt he hadn't got some of the credit that he deserved as an artist, both in terms of critical acclaim, but also financially, because for a long, long time he didn't get the royalties that he felt he was due for the Battle of Hell album. And he, he told me personally he was desperate to sue the record label in order to get millions and millions of pounds that I don't think he ever saw.